we're about to explain the graphical derivation of basic trigonometric functions. So let's start with the familiar sine of x. The graphical representation of sine of x can be depicted on a nice and friendly unit circle with axes centered on the origin and the value of sine of x equal to some small positive number. We can observe that as x increases, a path of x length is traversed around the unit circle in the counterclockwise direction starting from the rightmost position. The length x is equal to angle alpha in radians. In order to understand how the travel along this path affects the function f of x, which is sine of x, let us observe the diagram with an exaggerated change in x along with its vertical and horizontal components. Note that in cases where delta x is really small, it can be represented by a line tangential to the unit circle at the current position of x along the unit circle. Our depiction of the delta x is exaggerated so that we can easily notice how delta x is related to the delta sine of x. Basic rules of geometry tell us that the triangle describing the relationship between the change in x and the change in the function sine of x is actually similar to the triangle describing the function sine of x. If we put these two triangles side by side, we can notice a very useful ratio between the sides of the triangles. Take note that we can conclude that delta sine of x over delta x is equal to cosine of x over 1 which is to say that the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. Therefore, we can say that if f of x is equal to the sine of x, then the derivative of f of x is equal to the cosine of x. Since we managed to find the derivative of sine of x relatively quickly, let's try to use the same approach with the cosine of x. This graph should look familiar and it will serve us well to find the delta cosine x and its relation to other geometric values in the picture. Notice that the delta cosine x is related to the sine of x just as in the previous example delta sine of x was related to the cosine x. Something interesting remains to be noticed, however. When the sine of x is positive, the delta cosine x is negative. And when sine of x is negative, the delta cosine x is positive. For this reason, we can't just say that delta cosine x over delta x is equal to the sine of x over 1. Instead, we have to say that delta cosine x over delta x is equal to the negative sine of x over 1. And all of this means that if f of x is equal to the cosine x, then the derivative of f of x is equal to negative sine of x. Finally, we have arrived to the tangent of x. And since we know that tangent of x is equal to the sine of x over cosine of x, we can simply use the previously derived rule for division that says that if f of x is equal to g of x over r of x, then f prime of x is equal to, in parentheses, g prime of x times r of x minus g of x times r prime of x over r of x squared. In this case, this results in the equation, in parentheses, cosine of x times cosine of x plus sine of x times sine of x, all over cosine of x squared. And at this point, it would be useful to remember that cosine and sine are the sides of the right triangle with a hypotenuse equal to 1. Pythagoras would be pretty upset if we didn't realize that cosine of x times cosine of x plus sine of x times sine of x is equal to 1. With this knowledge in hand, we can simply say that if f of x is equal to tangent of x, then the derivative of f of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x squared. That is to say, the secant of x squared. 